Greetings, YouTube! Uh, music lovers of all kinds, and uh, that's the best intro I could kind of muster right now. But uh, thank you for clicking on this video. Uh, thank you for being patient with me in 2024. This is the long-awaited room tour video of 2024. Uh, my previous ones are available in my kind of, what do you call it, your video library. And uh, those have done quite well. So thank you for those people who have uh, seen those videos. And uh, as much as I'd like to skip over some stuff that is the same as last year, because uh, I know there's going to be people who have seen my previous videos, uh, I think there's enough different where I'm going to just kind of gloss over some things. So if you've seen it before, um, just, you know, use that slider, use your thumb if you're on your phone and slide on to something different, uh, on this video. But, uh, yeah, this is, uh, like I said, room tour video 2024, and I hope you enjoy it. What I'm going to do, uh, different than last year or the year before or the year before is, uh, in the description down below, I'm going to list the model numbers of the equipment. Cause usually I kind of go through that and then I list the model number and it just, it takes a long time. So I'm going to, if you're curious about any model numbers of things that I'm, I'm using, uh, it's in the, uh, it's in the video description down below. Um, I, and I assume you're all down below. Do, 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 do. Anyways, let's start off here. Uh, this is kind of like, you know, the panoramic view as I walk into my music room. The biggest difference from this year to last year to the year before to the year before is this is the year I embraced uh, 5.1 uh, DTS audio, uh, like Blu-ray 5.1, blah, 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 all that uh, fun stuff. Not Dolby Atmos. I've not... I don't think I'll go that far, but I've been really enjoying um, utilizing uh, a lot of uh, 5.1 Blu-ray audio discs, SACDs, a lot of SACDs, and I've been really loving that, you know, as well as vinyl, of course, but that's the biggest difference uh, this year, which you'll see coming up here. So this is, you know, your, you know as you're coming into my music room, uh, You've all seen this because I've been blabbering for the last couple of minutes. So what I'll do is I'll kind of, uh, light isn't great down here. So I'm going to, I've put some lights in different places, hoping that it'll help out. So you may see a glare here or there, or you might see some darkness, uh, depending on what view you're looking at here or I'm pointing the camera at. Uh, we're going to cover CDs really quickly because I don't know who cares about CDs anymore. But um, these would be kind of some of my SA CDs here in this little row right here. And, uh, but that's not all you'll see more in a second. This is kind of, uh, an amalgamation of, uh, anything that's not, uh, I would say eighties, which is the CDs I will show you behind me, which I use for, uh, all the DJing use, but this is kind of like, you know, you'd say your rock pop, blah, blah, blah. A lot of people like to see the spines of box sets or, or deluxe editions. Uh, you can always use your paws if you want to see things that I have here. Those are kind of. I guess deluxe edition type things. And there's those things there. Uh, I got rid of a lot of CDs to make some more, just to make it a little bit more compact. So I had to make a lot of tough choices this year, but um, this is kind of what I have. You don't need to see every single CD. Uh, these are jazz CDs here, some box sets, a really good Bill Evans box set and a Verve box set, but what you see behind that speaker there is all my jazz CDs there. And uh, I'll get to the speakers back here in a second because these uh, have not been here before. I've added some cubes on top of my uh, shelving units here, as you'll see going down the row here. Uh, this kind of adds more room because I can't fit any more shelving units in my basement, which is my music room. And even if I could, I've kind of got, to, I have to promise myself not to, because it's kind of, then you know, I'm going a little bit overboard more than I am now. But this would be, you know, I got uh, seven inch singles here, kind of all down there. And uh, this is what I would say, same as last year's, my uh, progressive rock, psych, anything like that. Uh, my Yes box set. Who has a Dave Mason carnival mirror? Where, where, excuse me, Dave Mason, uh, one of those carnival mirrors you can get in the 80s. Who has one of those in their music room? 
If you don't know who Dave Mason is, I suggest you kind of use uh, Spotify, YouTube, anything like that to look up Dave Mason. Uh, this is all my Pink Floyd vinyl, or most of it anyways. Uh, this would be most of my, or if not all of my Hawkwind vinyl in this cube right there. Uh, the Hawkwind vinyl or a CD box set I got in London uh, a year or two ago. And that is, like I said, that's the Prague Psych, that kind of stuff like that. And that's that uh, Stephen Wilson Yes vinyl box set right there. Uh, over here, what we have is uh, this would be metal vinyl in these two shelving units here. Uh, and these are, let's see, I think these are all metal vinyl box sets. People love to see the box sets, so there you go. There you go. And get ready for this. This is the most 80s clock you'll ever see in your life. Ready? This is actually from the 80s. I found this at a thrift store, but this is what I would call the greatest 80s clock of all time. Look at that. That just screams uh, pastel colors and, um, I don't know, leg warmers and looking like a nerd like I did back in the 80s. But that's metal right there. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to take you through all the stuff with metal there, but... Uh, and the bottom couple rows there is punk. Uh, I've got these little dividers here. I think I've had those before. I think you've all seen that before where I've kind of done them on double sides just so when I die, people will know where, where what is. And there's punk over here. And let's see. Oh, you know what? Let's just pan over here. Uh, I hope this is not shaking too bad for you. This is for people who are new. Uh, what I would consider... 80s CDs and quotations. Uh, I do DJ in 80s night, so I utilize a lot of these CDs for that purpose. There's one of those lights there. Just ignore that light there. And uh, some of my deluxe edition, blah, 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 80s things. Hopefully you can see those. There you go. That's not really too exciting, is it? So, uh, ooh, what to do now? What to do now? What to do now? What I'm going to do is, well, you know, let's show this. This is like uh, one of the changes. I have two of these now. These are two rear speakers. Um, like I said, I've embraced the whole, uh, I'm only about, what, 20 years behind? Yeah, or 10 years, whatever. But uh, the digital uh, listening audio experience, which I've, I've really loved, I have to say. So I've got a couple speakers back here. Those are my rear speakers and some nice stands I found at a thrift store. And you've probably seen the other one here. God, I hope I'm not making everyone sick by twirling the camera that bad. I'm sorry. I will try my best not to do that. So there's the other one there. And this is my couch. This is where I sit my fat ass and listen to music uh, almost every day anyways. So let's just go over here to a different viewing experience. Uh, this program I'm using now has a pause button, so I might utilize that if I need to get a better view on something. Or uh, like I said, if I, I don't really want to spin around too much and let's get all car sick. So uh, what about, yeah, metal. This is all, I don't think I'm getting the proper perspective of these. I think I'm too close, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see, that, that row is metal. And this, shelving unit is metal and i got a few rows of well i got more than i got about four rows of punk there and uh this is all ooh, too a little bit too close there um metallica vinyl right here got some kiss box sets this is an original kiss buckle belt buckle from uh 1979 i believe anyways there's and this is my kiss vinyl uh not all of it but a lot of it and like I said, by adding these cubes um, on top of my my shelving units here, these are all IKEA ones. Let's uh, let's get that out of the way. I use IKEA shelving units, and I love them. But uh, I've freed up a lot of room. So 
this is kind of like the be all and end all for space I have. This is it. And that's all. And I got to make the most of it and uh, purge if I, if I need more room. So that's that. Uh, what do we got here? We got um, the Twilight Zone complete 25 disc uh, complete series. I just got that recently. And oh man, have I been loving that. This is all, let's say, my hip hop vinyl, rap vinyl, as it says there. Hip hop. Uh, let's see some, uh, these are some seven inch box sets. Uh, let's see, that's uh, what I got there. Suede, Ramones, Sex Pistols, and uh, I forget what that one is actually. So, but that's a seven inch box set. Duh. And this is uh, music laser discs because I have a laser, laser disc player down here. So that's there at the tail end of my hip hop vinyl there. This is what I would consider this. If I'm not confusing people enough as it is, I have to say for people who don't know, I've worked in record stores for 22 years. I worked as a regular employee. I've done mostly management and I've, I've owned a store um, before leaving to do other things in life. So I'm so used to things being done by genre because of record stores that that's the way I have my vinyl. So for you who have not seen my videos before, uh, let's see if you get a different perspective this way. Uh, that's how I keep my vinyl, uh, good for bad. Everyone's got their own way of, uh, of uh, you know, filing things, and this is, uh, this is mine. So this is what goth, industrial, and electronic. So I'd say you would have like Bauhaus and Sisters of Mercy and The Cure, but you'd also have Daft Punk and Underworld and uh, let's see, Ministry, uh, Nine Inch Nails, things like that. So that's all of that. Right down here is, I don't know if I've ever done a video on this. This is what I would say is my most valuable vinyl. Oh, sorry. How about I pan down a bit here? You can tell I'm out of practice, right? Right? Right. This is what I would consider to be my most valuable vinyl I own in terms of dollar amount. So um, that's what that is there. That's separate. And I, and I separate, I don't even know why I separated that. That seems kind of silly, but it is separated. Um, whatever. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm, I got a light shining here, so I'm going to try hopefully just to not blind everyone. Uh, let's see. So we're moving on from this. Uh, I'm going to try not to make this too long, but you guys all know me. I like to be as detail uh, oriented as I can uh, when filming these videos. Uh, let's see what I got here. I got, uh, there's my Fonzie doll, my original one from the 70s. Up here. Up here. Uh, I keep these separated from my, from my regular cassette tapes because these are all current new cassette tapes that you can buy. Uh, not old ones, but the new ones. So I keep those separate uh, just because I, I, I just want to say that, you know, if a lot of people think that the cassette tapes now that they're selling in stores, they suck. Um, they're not as good as they used to be. But if you have a really good tape deck, you cannot tell a whole lot of difference. And I have a lot of really expensive, good tape decks. And the difference is really negligible. So I'm a big proponent of buying cassette tapes if, if you want to, of course. And if you don't, that's fine. That's your business and God bless you. But I really like buying the new cassette tapes. So I'm not, I'm not going to try to stretch up and yell in the microphone, but I'll just do a quick pan of some of the uh, new cassette tapes that uh, have come out recently in the last couple of years and you can buy. Oh, there you go. Hey, everyone. And then there's a back row here, but I don't know if I can get that or if you can even hear me. But uh, that's what I have for new tapes, and I really love them. And like I said, uh, get yourself a good tape deck, and you would hardly know the difference. This is uh, my mini discs. I have, let's see, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six personal like Walkman-type mini disc players. 
which I all love and cherish. And these are all um, not everything I have. But these are ones that have been recorded on, and I make little labels. At, um, n not at work. No, no. If you're watching this and you work with me, I do not make those at work. I swear. Okay, and then uh, some blister packs of uh, mini discs that they have sold years ago. The only pre-recorded mini disc I own, why do I have headphones here, is this one, Front 242 Live, which is one of my favorite industrialish kind of records. So I'm glad I found that on mini disc. What I have down here is some more blank mini discs, and trust me, I have hundreds more. Uh, tucked away like you see they're all kind of tucked away in these little things here behind here and they're all everywhere uh, I'm trying not to say ah too much I'm sorry about that this is one of the original RCA Victor uh, seven inch players that they sold back when RCA brought out the seven inch single and of course RCA had the seven inch single and then there was um, I'm blank you know who had the 12 inch vinyl but that but they had that so uh Whew, I'm really I'm brain farting big time today, but this is one of the original ones they sold. It was a stacker unit. This one does work, and there's the original paperwork that came with it. And you said it's a stacker. I think you can fit about ten on there, and it drops one after another. And uh, it's just a good piece of history. I don't really use it a whole lot, other than when people want to see it being used. But that's what it is, and I love it. And it was one of my not the best, but it's one of my better thrift store finds, I believe. Uh, there's Joey Ramone, and there's Johnny Rotten in the blister pack. And considering my feelings on this guy lately, I just kind of want to donate that to a thrift store. Uh, let's see, this is an iPod that I'm getting rid of. That's why I pulled it out of uh, storage. Someone I know wants it. Uh, these are all cassette tapes down. Oh, sorry, I'm going to blind you here. Cassette tapes down here. I got to find a better home for those, but that's where they are right now. And that's some of the pre recorded ones I have. This is my beautiful, you have not seen this before in a room tour video. Anyways, let me get this light out of here. Oh my God. This is my Fender Stratocaster. Uh, it's the Tom DeLong uh, model, Tom from Blink 182. But uh, he is not the reason why I bought it. I've always wanted a Fender Strat with one humbucker and one volume knob, and that's what it is. And that's the only guitar I own now. I've gotten rid of everything else. Uh, this is the guitar I kind of wanted, and this is the one I got, and they brought it back out in 2022. And I got it a year ago, and I just love it. It has everything that I want. It's got a, you see, hardtail bridge. It's got the, just one volume, that's all you need. It's got a Duncan Invader humbucker. It's got my Ace Freely type guitar strap and the most importantly it's got the big 70s headstock which is mandatory if i am going to own a fender strat so that's that i don't know who out there cared about that but that's what that is before we get to the main equipment there's just more things to show you let's see if we can see this is where i sit and i listen to my music usually right here and uh, I'll, have to tell, I'll have to tell a story later about this but my my beautiful dog comes and joins me right there especially if I'm playing really hard metal. For some reason, he just comes running for that and he sits beside me and listens. He's a freak and I know it. So there he goes, there's that. These are, oh, my beautiful Captain Sensible poster. Uh, he's a hero of mine and I've met him and uh, I think he's fantastic. I've seen him, I've seen The Damned uh, in 2022, I believe in Los Angeles. Uh, it was fantastic. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I used to keep my guitar up here, which I still do sometimes, but I find it if it's on the stand, I play it a bit more. Uh, I'm really, really, really into MTV because that's what I grew up with, and I'm just kind of a, a retro love of mine. So some wall stickers just to fill some space. This is a recent thing I found at a thrift store. This is a beautiful, I got it fully working, and I opened it up, and I cleaned it, and I got it fixed. Everything works perfectly. It's a portable uh, a track player from the seventies, as you can see there. It and it sounds not bad actually for a portable, you know, for what you take with you back in the seventies, back to a beach or something like that, or a lake or whatever, depending where you live. Uh, just some of my A tracks I have. I have lots more in proper A track cases. Um, 
under my table here, but I'm not going to open those up. If someday someone wants to see what I have on a track, I'd be happy to make another video. And um, we're going to show, I'm going to take a drink here and I'm going to try my best not to um, make a slurping sound. Um, okay, we're going to show this in a second. This is my table, but what I want, oh, you saw my finger there too. This is um, my, oh, Jesus, my present to myself last Christmas. This is um, my Audio Technica Sound Burger. And if you watch a channel called Techmoan, uh, he's to blame for uh, making me want one of these. So it's if you don't know what this is, this is a portable... Uh, record player that they had in the late 70s, I believe, early 80s. And uh, they discontinued it, and now they've brought it back uh, due to demand, and they brought out a limited edition, and that sold out instantly, so that now it's a regular product you can buy. But I think it's fantastic. I love it. I love this sitting here. And, you know, say I'm tired, I'm sick, I'm on my couch, I don't want to get up and change the record all the time. I use this uh, right here. It uh, works via Bluetooth to my amp. And it actually sounds, you would be surprised how good this thing sounds. I swear I would not lie to you, um, but that's what that is. And I love it. And I use it, I use it like all the time when I, like I said, I just don't want to get up and use my main turntable. So I wanted to show you that. I'd be remiss if I didn't show you that. Um, just to be, a, let's just keep that up. And I'm going to try to slide over this way because I'm going to show you. Oh, I'm going to show my best thrift store find ever uh, as far as stereo equipment in a second. Uh, for those who don't know, I collect Sony Walkmans. And here is a selection of not just Sony. In fact, Sony, I don't really think are the best Walkmans that you can get, but that's not here nor there. But So there's lots of other brands. This is not even all of them. This is what I just have on display. And there's Connor McDavid. Go, Oilers, go. I think Iowa is, is probably one of the best, or and Panasonic, actually, is some of the best Walkmans out there. Uh, new old stock cassette tapes. I have, like, hundreds more I've accumulated, but this is just what's on display. Um, periodically, I have someone uh, come over when I'm selling a piece of stereo equipment, like a cassette deck, and I'll mention I have cassette tapes for sale, and they they go crazy because the, they want them instantly. So I keep some out here so they can buy some. Uh, let's see what this is. That's what, that's what that is. So there's uh, most of the Walkmans I have. I've gotten rid of some of them. These, But these are all working. I don't keep uh, anything not working 100% uh, on display anymore. I kind of just get rid of it if I can't fix it. So that's that. I hope everyone has had a chance to see kind of all of that. One thing I don't think I mentioned. Did I or did I not? See, I don't even know where it is now. Oh, you know what? It's hidden over here. Damn it. I wish I would have pulled it out. This wood box that you can kind of see right there. Here. That's one of those Neil Young Pono uh, high res players in the box, in the wood box. Never been used. And I've... I should have brought that out for you guys to see, but that's what that is back there. I should have shown that. Uh, this is a cassette deck I've picked up late, um, recently, and this is, I think, going to be the cassette deck I use from now on. I'm trying to get rid of all my extra stereo equipment. This is a three-head JVC in perfect working condition that I found uh, at a thrift store uh, three, four days ago, and it, uh, it sounds incredibly good and this is kind of what i'm going to use uh i don't i don't know why it's here right now it usually should be in the main system but i have something else there and i just haven't had time to swap them out yet but uh yeah like i said uh, three head cassette deck and it sounds amazing so that's doing it even like uh tracks decibels it's just i don't know it's really it's crazy but awesome uh cassette tapes these are all kind of uh let's see what we got here these are kind of all metal cassette tapes i guess or heavy metal cassette tapes all of these here are down here. That's my practice amp, my Yamaha practice amp I use there. Those are all metal cassette tapes. This is, I'm, I'm going to see if I can demonstrate this for you uh, while I have you all. This is um, the greatest thrift store find I've ever had. And it was um, 
early 2024 and it is in perfect working condition. I think it sells between 11. I was tracking on eBay, which isn't the greatest source, but that's the only thing, that's the only kind of source I have right now to use. It's 1100 Canadian to 1500 Canadian dollars. It's actually sells for working. And I think if it's broken for parts, it's about 500, but that's, that's not why I got it. It's those great techniques, uh, linear tracking turntables they had, uh, I think they were early 80s, like the SL10 and the SL5 and all those. Uh, that's, uh, those were those regular kind of really heavy linear tracking turntables. This is the rare vertical linear tracking turntable that they brought out uh, as part of that same series. It's the SLV5, and I should have not told you that because I said I was going to put it in the description, but that's what that is. And I'm going to show it to you right now. I have always wanted a vertical turntable. And I pop into a thrift store with someone I work with after work one day. Um, and uh, there it is. It was just sitting on the shelf. Just came out. And uh, I almost had a heart attack and died. But anyways, and it didn't need a whole lot of maintenance. I put some new grease in where the tone arm kind of goes along the pole there. And you probably can't see with the light, but I hope you can. Uh, there's those lasers they use for tracking and the cartridges there. And I have a brand new cartridge for it I put on recently. So basically, oh, if I can get this right, oh, there's that. And I found this other kind of matching techniques thing. It just looks neat under it. It's one of the, it's, well, it's called a space dimension controller. And it it's, I don't know, you know, when in the 70s, if you're old enough to know, like echo and reverb was very popular. It was reverb units to use in the seventies. Um, this just looks neat. I kind of, I think I more or less bypass it when I'm using this, but I just like the display. So let's tell you what, let's, let's turn this on. There's going to be no music playing obviously, cause I don't want any content matches, but uh, that's right there. And as you can see down here, there's the display that I love watching these little display units. I have one in my main unit too, but it's uh, something slightly different. But that's what that is. It's, it's a technique. Uh, it's called a space dimension controller or uh, something what I, I like to call it, something pretty to look at. But there it is there. That's the best, probably the best overall thrift store find I'll ever have for stereo equipment. And like I said, I've, it's taken me decades and decades to find one. And lo and behold, I find one at a thrift store. So let's just turn this off now. You've seen enough of this. And there you go. Perfect. Um, I don't know what more I can show you in this wall right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a quick little cut and I'm going to go to my main unit. So we're back, and this is my main unit. Um, if you want to see what's different, I guess, without me having to blab on about it, um, you can go back and watch my older my older ones I have in my library. But um, what I'm going to show you, I think, last is the secret weapon of all secret weapons that a friend of mine turned me on to to make my unit um, sound even better, or if that can be possible. But um, before I start... Um, I always like to have this disclaimer. A lot of people like to have their stereo system certain ways, and that's, you know what? God bless you. And some people like to have them another way, and that's fine with them. A lot of people believe that, you know what? You, do, you don't want a signal to interfere between your turntable and your uh, amp, and you want to have as little bit in between it, and that's fine. It sounds good that way. Uh, some people like me, they like to have some fun, and they have things in between uh, your signal path, which I do have a few. Uh, I don't think the sound benefits at all. Or, it, sorry, I think there's no uh, there's no benefit either way. I don't think it's all your own ears. Everyone's ears are different. So um, that's kind of what I like to kind of preface this by. So huh, what do we got here? Let's just knock this one off here. This is like uh, a lot of my, uh, what are those? A lot of my 
5.1 Blu-ray audio, SACDs, et cetera, et cetera, that I use. Uh, Reel-to-reel tapes I have. Not all of them, but those are the ones that um, I'm, uh, that have already been recorded on or they're blank or new old stock that needs to be recorded on. Let's start with this. This is the turntable I'm using right now. Um, my turntable... Oh, sorry. Jesus. What was that? Um, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to say as um as little as possible, and I'm failing miserably. I think I've already said that, but I'm also trying not to repeat myself, and I'm also failing at that as well. This is uh, my turntable, and this is, uh, like I said, I, I have a different turntable, it seems, every year. So uh, I've made myself a promise that I do have a dream turntable that's not god-awful expensive, that is obtainable. And once I get that turntable, that will be it. Um, having said that, this is a, a great turntable that I picked up uh, in a trade with some guy who wanted to trade equipment on uh, one of the online uh, buy and sell groups. So we went over and we swapped some equipment and this is what I got. Uh, it's fully manual, but it's quartz locked. It's, what is this? A Toshiba. And you can kind of look at yourself. I think it's a fantastic turntable. Uh, there's uh, whether you also, I got one of these things too. Hmm? Like I said, another, another thing that some people like to argue about what the benefits of those, but you know what? They don't hurt things. They don't may not add anything, but it's just something. It's, it's just fun. Um, good thing about this, like I said, the, uh, the, uh, let's see, the queuing lever is the softest I've ever seen in my life. It's quartz locked. Uh, you can always take the quartz lock off, obviously. There you go. Uh, so you can, you can take it on or off. I don't like to fuck with it, so I just leave it. Yeah, leave it there. Uh, and let's see, I got a acrylic turntable pla uh, platter. Um, what do I call this? I have a video and that a lot of people have seen on this, so I should know. It's an acrylic turntable platter that I, I love that I've added there. And uh, let's see, that's the cartridge that I've always used, and that's no different there. This is, I think, all different from last year. This is, uh, I have many DBX units uh, that I've had in my system that were for audio, not for guitars, but for audio. And this is a dynamic range enhancer. And there's YouTube videos about these things. So if you want to see uh, what these things are or what they do to your sound, you can watch those. But I'm a firm believer in it. And I found one online and I got it. Uh, some extra cartridges there, but this is uh, what I'm talking about here. And I, I, well, you know, someday I'll show you. I'll show it in in use in some in, in some time because there's a way to dial it in. Basically, you have to spend some time dialing these things in, and you know, to get this preferred sound. This is one of those SA. Well, I mean, a lot of companies brought these things out, but this is an SA SAE unit. Um, it's one of those. What do you call it? Uh, well, it, impulse noise reduction system and basically what this does this is it reduces the pops and clicks on your vinyl and it has this great this great feature like i said there's other videos on youtube about these things sa this is the sae 5000 i believe um but you can just isolate the clicks and you can't really hear that by pressing that, but that's what you would do if it was on. Uh, but you can hear just the clicks on the record you're playing, and then you can take that off, and you know, and it actually does work. Like I won't say I'm not going to say it's magic, but it it is really good at reducing pops and clicks. It's 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 stunningly surprising uh, how how good that is. So these are the two, I think, new things I have as far as the turntable goes in my main system. Oh yeah, I got one of these uh, uh, zero stat guns. Uh, the jury is out whether I believe in those or if I want to ha continue having one of those. I just got that recently online and uh, jury's out. I'm not sure whether I, I believe in that thing yet. Well, I do, but the benefits, I don't know. That's my laser disc player I got. Uh, down here, I have one upstairs as well. My preamp, which is a uh, see, well, I got a Pioneer laser disc player. Since I'm, I'm, you know, I'm saying brand names. This is a Mies, uh preamp. 
This is my realistic 8-track player, and this thing is absolutely fantastic. It has Dolby noise reduction, which on 8-tracks makes a massive difference. Uh, so uh, if you're into just having some fun with 8-tracks, like I said, anything I have here that you might think you might scoff at and say, you know, why, why are you fucking around with that? Why are you messing around with that? It's just, it's, it's all fun. And let's just say this, you have your opinion, I have my opinion, and let's shake hands and agree on that, uh, just to prevent any comments, I guess, in the in the comment section about why you having an 8-track player. It's just fun, that's all it is, and, uh, and I just happen to find this really good realistic um, unit uh, with Dolby, which makes a massive difference. Uh, I've added a TV uh, to my main unit uh, because... If you're going to have a lot of 5.1 um, SACDs and stuff like that, you have to have a screen to, uh, you know, just to do track selection, just to navigate the main menus. You, it's really hard to do without one. So I've added a TV down here that I primarily use for that purpose uh, on screen now as an Alice Cooper Quadio, as they call it. Uh, uh, audio file CD there. And uh, people might remember this from previous videos, but that's my Pioneer reel to reel player, uh, which I also love and I do use. This is one of those fun things that I have uh, in my um, in my chain for my turntable. It's a Sansui graphic equalizer, but this is one of those, uh, you know, you know, those things. Uh, I wish I could uh, demonstrate. I think I've shown this before, but uh, it's uh, there's a name for it. Not once again, I'm brain farting. So um, it makes lovely just impulses of light, which I love. Uh, in the comment section, you can remind me because uh, I'm an idiot to what uh, what these things are called, or it'll come to me. Uh, let's see here. One second, I'm gonna take another drink. All right, so that's, uh, I hope I'm not missing anything there. Um, because like I said, I'm, I have a very beautiful silver-faced massive amplifier upstairs in storage because um, it's really hard to utilize 5.1 and all that fun things without a modern-day amplifier. And honestly, I don't really notice any difference in sound quality between the two. It's just like these have all the outputs you would need, but that's uh, a Sony I, I use, uh, Sony CD player, five disc player. I use the, I kind of really only use this to, um, so I can record onto reel to reel or whatever other thing I'm using. Uh, and, and that goes into, that's the reason why that would be there because um, I like to have the five discs so you can program and do a full recording onto a reel-to-reel -reel, rather than having to press pause and put another disc into the Blu-ray player or SACD player, whatever you're using. And it's just more out of convenience. I, I wouldn't die without it. Um, down here, and it's not plugged in for some reason, this is, this is my DAT, my Tascam uh, DAT or DAT player recorder that I really like to use as well time to time this is this is and was my main cassette deck um i have about seven in storage still that i gotta sell but this is a um a tascam 112 mark ii i do have a 122 as well the uh, later model but uh, i find this one a little bit uh easier to use that's my main player and probably in truth it sounds it sounds i think a bit better than the jvc maybe but um, I like all the bells and whistles on the JVC, honestly, and the sound difference is, you know, it's not noticeable enough, you know, so that's my main cassette deck there. Oh, uh, what am I, let's see, this is my DCC player, digital compact cassette, let's see, do I have one in there? I do, look at that. Oop, I was going to show you the tape. For those who don't know what DCC is, it was an audio format brought out at the same time as mini discs, uh, brought out by, who was it, Philips? Someone like that? I can't remember. No, no, yeah, it was Philips who brought it out, because I have a Philips player. Um, these players tend to break because they were all built with the same 
innards, the in, in inner innards, uh, and the capacitors tend to leak. So to have a working one like this is kind of a rare sight, I guess. But uh, there's the digital compact cassette tapes. They sound CD quality. Oh, oop, how about I? How about, how about I just don't do that? And that's that. And I'm just going to turn that off while I have the time here. Uh, an absolutely pointless uh, little kind of equalizer thing when you press the buttons to the right settings. This is another addition, which I has, have I, I think is one of the best additions I've made to my stereo system. It's uh, it's a Weem W I I M digital high res um, audio player. So I play the high res music off of my phone, goes to here, and then it goes to there. And it uh, plays in, because I use Tidal, which is a higher uh, format or, or bit rate of, uh, of music playback, uh, it, it sounds incredibly good. Uh, I would say almost better than CD or at CD quality anyways. So I'm not gonna say it's better than CDs, but at CD quality. So that's kind of uh, my Wee music streamer. And that is the, uh, center channel and in the size of my room I don't need more than this and you would believe I had a big one here about six months ago it took up this whole space and I thought size matters which I like to tell girls that uh, well no I like to say size doesn't matter no yeah no it doesn't matter because that big one came out and I found this match because I used Hanoi tower speakers so I found this at a thrift store and it actually sounds incredibly good with my speakers. And I got rid of the big one and I put this one in and the sound difference was quite noticeable. So you don't need, in a room my size, you don't need a big center channel. It just doesn't really do anything. This small one sounds great. And uh, so once again, if there's any girls watching, size does not matter. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. This, uh, what vantage point? Oh, these are, uh, these are just, uh, HDMI switchers and, uh, optical, optical cable switchers. Cause I have several units that use, uh, HDMI and several things that use optical. And, uh, a great lesson I learned this year for anyone who likes to use SACD and you probably know this, but like a dummy, I just, for, I don't know why I didn't know this. Uh, you can only get full uh, use out of SACDs using HDMI because using optical, like I was using, you, optical cannot transmit um, the highest frequencies that a HDMI cable can can do. So I transferred over and it sounds really good, actually, much better than it was before. So my SACDs sound uh, even gooder. Oh, I forgot this. This because I've... Uh, a few turntables, my vertical turntable and my main turntable and my cassette decks are plugged into here. This is a realistic, uh, kind of one of those little mixers they had back in the late seventies, early eighties. And you know what? It does the job. I can have both turntables plugged in at the same time. I can have my tape decks plugged in and it's, uh, oh, I don't, the microphone input I don't use. So I turn that off, but that's that. Got the needles so I can keep track of uh, peak levels. So that's what I kind of have everything plugged into that is um, RCA cable driven is plugged into this thing here. That because obviously it's older and it just takes RCA cables. Uh, this is my main mini disc player is a Yamaha. It's from actually from Japan. So I had to buy a step up, step down transformer, which is behind the main unit here. That's the sound of my main unit. And uh, that's the one, that's my main mini disc player. And it sounds fantastic. And I've had it for five or six years now. It's, it hasn't failed me and I absolutely love it. I'm a huge mini disc uh, fanatic. So I still use them quite frequently. This, I keep this tape deck out here because it's uh, one of those rare Dolby S units and it's in working condition. Uh, Dolby S was the last Dolby they made for audio. There's Dolby B, obviously, or Dolby, and then there was Dolby C. And then at the tail end of the cassette tapes, they brought out Dolby S, 
which if you are playing back a, a pre-recorded cassette tape, which I do have, um, which I'll show you in a second, uh, the sound is almost totally uh, hiss-free. It's amazing how good it sounds. And you can record in Dolby S, obviously, and play back in Dolby C. And it also, or Dolby S, Dolby C, Dolby S. And it sounds fantastic. And that's my Blu-ray slash SACD player I use, is that Sony thing here. And I have a clip uh, sub down there, kind of hidden away there. And let's see, these are my Tanoi speakers. These are the ones I've had for three years now. Um, they're UK made, Canadian loved uh, tower speakers that I use and I love. And for like I said, for the size of my room, I don't need anything more than this. I've had much bigger ones than this. And trust me, I learned my lesson that you don't need all that power and it kind of just uh, honestly kind of muddles the sound and things don't sound quite right. So having, let's see, uh, see a driver and a tweeter and have it ported and it sounds fantastic. And that's that. And this, I'm going to go into my music room right away, my, my uh, music room I have off to the side in a second. So that is, if you have any questions that I did not cover, Oh, I, I neglected to say, please drop them in the comments section, and I promise I will answer them in due course. So that's that. That is my main stereo unit for 2024, which I love. I got way too many formats of music, but I have a lot of fun uh, using them when I do use them. So that is... Oh, you know what? I'm going to show you my secret weapon, which I forgot. So give me one second. I'm going to sit my arse back down. Get a drink, and I'm going to show you my secret weapon that my friend turned me on to that has elevated my vinyl listening experience uh, tenfold. One second, everyone. I'll be right back. All right, we're back. Um, I wanted to uh, quickly um, take some cold medicine because if you can't tell, I have a bit of a cold, and I sound like a stuffed-up old bastard. I want to show that in a second. I remembered what this is called. This is called a reverberation unit. Yay, I remembered. I'm not... I'm not brain dead yet. So, uh, I have a friend named Tim. Tim has been a DJ for decades and decades, and he has the uh, he knows everything about everything about um, enhancing your vinyl listening pleasure. Uh, and one day, uh, Tim says to me, "Do you have one of these in your system?" And I said, "Why? No, I don't." Uh, thinking how I could bullshit him that he doesn't know something I don't, but he does. He knows a lot I don't know. This is called a, a BBE Sonic Maximizer, which I'm going to show you there. And I wish I had some copyright free music to play for you to play the difference, but I'm not sure if you'd hear it over YouTube with the. Um, you know, the sound you get from YouTube, as you probably hear from a lot of people say. Uh, but the difference when you engage it and turn it on, it's absolutely stunning. And a lot of people recommend things. Oh, you should get one of these for your system. You should get one of those for your system. And generally, you know, I'm not really too impressed. This, and he told me, Tim told me flat out, you you will lose your mind. And um, very rarely will I say that I, my jaw almost hit the floor at how good, um, now I'm not saying go out and run out and get one of these because results may vary, uh, because this has to actually really quickly, this has to go into it. As Tim told me, this has to be the last thing in your chain for your vinyl. So if you have it in any other place, if you have it right after the turn, if you have it right after the turntable, it's not going to work. If you have it right after whatever, it's not going to work. It has to be the last thing in your chain before it goes into your amplifier. Then it takes all the information you're giving it. Um, and it it's, oh my God. If you, have, if you see one of these, these are, a lot of times these are used by guitar players. But then also a lot of audio enthusiasts use them as well. So uh, it's... There's different model numbers, but the, the brand name is BBE. 
Um, Behringer makes a clone of this, which does not remotely replicate the sound as Behringer is known to do a lot of um, cloning of things. And they have one that's, uh, that the description looks, sounds like it. this is, you know, it does what this does. And it looks like this, but it's, it's, it's on a whole other level that, of, of shittiness. So please don't get the Behringer one if you wanted to explore this. Um, get the BBE brand. Sonic Maximizer. And like I said, in the description down below, I will give you all the model numbers. Like I said, these come in different model numbers, different colors. Um, Tim's is blue. I've seen black ones, but uh, um, they're not, they're not hard to find, but they're not easy. So if you look, hard, if you kind of you know look semi regularly in your local listings, uh, you will find one. And if you have any questions of how to use it or how how it plugs in or et cetera, et cetera, um, please drop a comment and I will be happy to tell you. But this has been the biggest change of listening experience I can ever say I've ever had. And Tim told me, Dave, this will be the biggest change you'll ever have in your vinyl listening and I'm like okay tim whatever you're fucking crazy but he wasn't as always tim was right so you know i have all these nice fun things i have which you know enhanced and they enhance the sound quality yes this is the secret weapon and like i said if you get one and if you don't like it don't blame me i'm just telling you that this is what i am saying um, vinyl listener for 40 years or more. So uh, it's insane. And I can't believe I, I hadn't known about this before, but it took an old DJ who is still on top of things to know what is what. And there that is. So uh, that's my secret weapon. And that's, like I said, that's uh, the biggest change I've had in vinyl listening is one of those damn things so uh give me a second we're gonna go look into my room uh to my right with all my vinyl well not all the remaining bits of my vinyl one second everyone going into my uh music room uh for those who have seen my previous videos before you'll know that i have i think before i bought this house uh this was a study um, they renovated the basement and they made a study of some kind. And uh, <laughs> I was not going to have that. Uh, my studying days is well behind me. So this is uh, for new people. This is uh, um, my music room, I call. But uh, it's the other half of my vinyl, I would say. Let's get a better view here. As I'm walking into my music room. La -da 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 -da. And in here is my what I classify as... rock or pop and rock rock and pop and it's all kind of broken into like letters of the alphabet um what else i got here i'll go through some other things in a second but uh that's what i would call all of my i don't know if i can get a better shot here of my kind of rock and pop in there so what i got here i got box sets people love box sets people have been asking me to do just box set videos and um i don't think there's enough there to make a really kind of great video but i like to show them what i have because I've, I've always i'm always adding vinyl box sets so that jane's addiction one might might not have been on my last video it's got suede peter gabriel that's jack white one of those uh, uh third man record things uh, is this queen I think this is Queen, actually. Yes, this is Queen. News of the World, 40th anniversary box set. That's T-Rex. Uh, what have we got there? T-Rex. Uh, what is that? That's another Third Man Records one. Uh, Depeche Mode remixes. I got two copies of that. Depeche Mode remixes one. Replacements box set. And to the person who bought that for me, if you're watching, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, this is one of those U, uh, what are the UHQR, whatever that this is new. 
Oh, this no, that's not one of those. This is one of those um, MoFi Alter Disc One Step Discs. This is the Michael Jackson uh, Alter Disc One Step pressing by Mobile Fidelity, and it sounds it's the be all and end all. If you're if you want a copy of Thriller and you want one that is like okay, this is the best copy you'll ever own. That's the best copy you'll ever own. Uh, let's see, Fluid Mac, Fluid Mac, Fluid Mac. Stevie Nicks, which I recently got um, from an online ad for, I can't remember, 20, 30 bucks. This is another, I've added a few cubes in here as well, as you'll kind of, you'll see. This is uh, all, not all, there's more down here, but this is David Bowie vinyl. Just Bowie vinyl here. Uh, that's another portable 8-track player I found. Uh, it's sitting up there right now for whatever reason. Uh, let's see, Bowie... Bowie Boy, Tisha Fears, Garth Brooks, Springsteen, Chic. What the hell is this one? I can't remember what this one is. What is oh it's U2. U2. Beastie Boys Anthology. Lush Jimi Hendrix. I have two of these from uh, analog productions. This is the UHQR um, pressing of Jimi Hendrix. Are you experienced? Sounds fantastic. This is a actually this is actually a DVD box set. I didn't have anywhere to put it, but this is the complete works of Fellini. If you want to feel all artsy, Ram Stein, Bruce Springsteen. This is a uh, Miles Davis, the best quality pressing I've ever heard of. Kind of blue. Now, are these things worth the money they're asking? No. And I, it would have to take my favorite albums of all time or my top three favorite albums of all time to come out on that for me to spend the money. But for casual, you know, buying eh, for the money they're asking, that's, that's a, that's a big ask. That's the Miles Davis kind of blue, blue, what was it? 40th, 50th anniversary box set. Uh, let's see here. 50th anniversary box set. Uh, it's blue vinyl. There's a bunch of CDs in there. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, those, the vinyl in there sounds really good as well. That is uh, the Doors. This is a Doors audiophile box set. Um, there's a story of how I found that. Uh, that was at a thrift store. Um, yeah, the best sounding doors you'll ever need right there. I still have not opened this puppy yet, and I'm not sure why I haven't, but this is the Smith's Queen is Dead box set. It's still sealed. Why? I got to get on that. I just have too much to listen to. Pink Floyd, uh, that's actually a CD box set. Motown box, Alphaville, which I found at a thrift store. This is a deluxe vinyl edition, anniversary edition that came out a couple years ago. And I got that for 10 bucks at a thrift store. I hope you guys can all hear me. Uh, Human League, Oasis, 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 Oasis. Uh, it's a Queen book. Uh, these are my uh, heavy metal and punk 7-inch singles. I just keep them separate just to have the flow of it. This is different from... Oh, this is not... Well, this is not different. My Kiss Bears. No, yeah, this is because they were over on my couch before. But I kind of stuffied them up there. I don't have any room with my... I don't have any room to put them where my normal kiss stuff goes over to this thing you've previously seen over there. So they kind of reside up there right now and they're happy up there. Um, I've added these shelves, which is different from last year to house music DVDs. I found that I was not using my music DVDs. Uh, I love them, but I just, now that I've added a screen down here, or TV, sorry, uh, it, it just, I needed to have them down here. They're in um, an entertainment center upstairs uh, on the on the main level, and I just was never using them. So now that they're in plain view, as you can see some there. But that's uh, yeah. This is uh, not all, but a lot of my kind of what metal, hard rock, uh, music DVDs, and then I added a shelf there, and then I added this main one here for kind of you know rock pop kind of things. Let's see. Let's see what's up there. I don't think you can see with the glare, but 
that's kind of what I have up here. Um, like I said, I have more than that, but that's, like I said, there's a whole rack here hidden, which is nice because I, I know they're there. And I find that I use these a lot more now, which is great. This is all new as well, right up here. Um, I had this all stuffed with stereo equipment, I think last time, or last time you guys seen it up here, I've made it all nice and purdy as uh, I think it is anyways. Um, by the way, these racks here, uh, these are the last two vinyl. No, listen, that's not true. I have one more vinyl rack behind me over here. Uh, the band, this is country vinyl over here. What you see there is those bands there. That's all their vinyl. Those are the boxes of my favorite singles of all time. And every edition of Classic Pop Magazine, because uh, I've subscribed, I've been a, a subscriber since issue one. Those are all those classic pop magazine. These are all of my 12 inch singles uh, that I may have used for DJing previously. And now I just use for fun. But that whole rack is just 12 inch singles. Um, got Pac Man. But yeah, this is all different. I added a kind of an elevated table here. And then I have some vinyl box sets uh, still. Continuation from up there Smashing Pumpkins, some Led Zeppelin, some Asia, some Neil Young. Couple of jazz box sets. Um, then up here I have, let's see, a T Rex singles box set. This is a complete discography box set of T Rex on CD. Uh, this is the 50th anniversary seven, seven inch box set of uh, Space Oddity by David Bowie, obviously, which I have not opened yet. Um, DVD box sets for Live Aid 1 and then that other shitty live. Well, I wasn't that shitty, but that other Live Aid they did. Some more CD box sets over here. Uh, these are all CD box sets here. Uh, see, you got some U2, some Crowded House, some Sex Pistols, Genesis, Police. You can see the rest yourself. And these are also CD box sets over here. So you got English Beat, Nirvana, Public Image Limited, Black Sabbath, Van Halen. Oh, this is a fantastic one. Um, Vertigo Records, a retrospective of all their great stuff they did in the 70s. Uh, the complete split ends box set that my in-laws got me from Australia. Thank you so much. You guys are the best ever. Uh, Wax Tracks Records box set. That one, a uh, new wave of heavy metal thing that came out uh, that Lard, Lars Ulrich from Metallica put together. I uh, see Death Angel, some Queensryche, some uh, Blue Oyster Cult, Motorhead, Iron Maiden, and there's the uh, Eddie Head that came out many years ago with the flashing eyes. I've taken the eyes out now just because I don't use them and I don't want them blinking all the time, but that's the Ed Head that came out many years ago. So that's that. And I'm going to back up, so I'm going to grab a drink. Like I said, I'm not feeling that great, but I'm still doing this for you. Hope you damn appreciate it. Um, my Pac-Man coin bank. Um, these Iron Maiden and Kiss CDs. The original Maxell uh, tape. Poster. It's not great. Ah, oh, that's fantastic. Uh, these are all Metallica CDs for the most part. Well, they are. Let's see, a couple of Jewish Priest box sets, some other CD box sets you can kind of see. Well, there's my little Metallica fun set with Cliff. I've met Metallica several times thanks to working in retail for many years. Um, so Warner, when they were back on Elektra, uh, a subsidiary of Warner Music. The the record label was able to get me backstage a few times. Um, last time I was able to go backstage was for Death Magnetic Tour, and they signed the Death Magnetic came out um, in this coffin set, and inside was a bunch of goodies, and they all signed it for me. Uh, even Robert. Yeah, let's not talk about that. Uh, these are all metal CDs here. I've traded a lot of my metal CDs away to uh, 
a guy in town who trades me. Well, he, I don't do it no more, but um, so I'm kind of building my metal CDs back up again. He used to trade me kind of straight across for stereo equipment he would find that uh, if I wanted, I would trade him. Uh, these are more cassette tapes up here. This is all different too. Uh, these are kind of, you know, this is a Dolby S cassette tape. And I wish I could uh, I could focus in there. You can kind of see it under the two, or you might not be able to. This is Dolby S, a Dolby S pre-recorded tape. I have a few of these. I'm trying to find as many as I can. When you play this on a, on a, a Dolby S cassette deck, it's stunning. That's all I'm going to say. So that's the Prince cassette box, Elton John box, well, kind of deluxe cassette, Wings. A lot of cassette tapes. I gotta, I gotta really pare down a lot. This is. I'm not gonna go too in depth into this. This is my Roger Waters signed Dark Side of the Moon um, poster from when he did that tour in 2007. Autographed. Thank you very much. This is uh, the last of the vinyl uh, rack. Z rack z in plural to show you today. This is soundtracks, uh, various, as you can see, soundtracks, various compilations, various compilations. And then I got jazz all the way down. And because I have a bunch of records I haven't filed yet, um, kind of things I've bought over the summer that I haven't listened to yet or had a chance to, um, I haven't listened to a lot of vinyl this summer and I usually don't. I love to spend it outside. Uh, living up in northern Canada, if you if you live in Canada, especially where I'm from, you know that we have enough winter months where it's minus 30, minus 40, where you get a lot of time to sit and listen to records. So I will get to this. Although, tons of freedom, I've heard before. That's the new Damned uh, Reunion Live album, which is going to be fantastic. I haven't heard it yet, but it's going to be fantastic. There you go. That's uh, so. Anyways, what uh, what this is hiding is uh, this is all funk and soul down here, and like I said, this is all jazz down here. And uh, let's see, this is kind of where because I was running out of room, I found this at a thrift store. It's a kind of a wall hanger thing. You can put CDs. So I kind of use this for deluxe editions, and it saves me a lot of room in my racks. I have, like I said, I only have so many racks racks and rack space so i'm trying to utilize as much space as i can so that's that um my iron maiden scarf from that uh summer back in time tour i don't buy tour scarves but i think for that tour they did into what uh, for somewhere back in time that kind of best of tour i think i bought one of everything and because I'm stupid like that. So that is the music room, as I call it. Uh, that does not house all the vinyl, but it ha houses a great deal. I'm going to try to back up without knocking anything over to kind of get a better perspective for you all. Like I said, some call this a study. I call this just pure magic and love this room here. So that's what that is. And... I think I have covered everything in this room tour video. There is a lot new, isn't there? And I hope you guys can hear me all. Uh, I hope I'm speaking loud enough. Like I said, I'm suffering a bit of a cold here. So uh, my voice is starting to go after talking this long. But there you go. That's it. That's 2024. Uh, look down below for model numbers. If you want to look, see what I'm using, um, like I said, not everything I have is the best of the best, it, but it's what I need. I don't need the best of the best. I need just something good that's going to work and be consistent. And that's what I love about stereo equipment. That's the first thing I want in stereo equipment. Um, so I don't need some $20,000 turntable. That's ridiculous. I don't need, you know, the best Nakamichi Dragon cassette deck. That's ridiculous. I don't need that. This is what I have and this is what I love. And this is my... This area you just seen is uh, kind of my, you know, reason for ex existing a lot of days when things aren't going right and, you know, you're not feeling well and you're, you've been sick a lot and suffer a lot of, you know, things in life like I have uh, in the last year. Uh, this is what kind of 
brings me love and gives me hope is this music room. So thank you all for watching. If you made it this far, uh, thank you. Thank you. I love you all. Um, I look forward to doing this in 2025. Um, don't know how much it's going to be different, but let's just say it probably will change up a bit. Um, and that's it. I'll try to make a new vinyl video for you all soon. And so from Naz Nomad to you, I wish you all the best uh, for the rest of 2024, and we'll see you soon. Take care, everyone.